How's it going everybody? Zeke here and we are back with another tutorial for Zombicite and there are a few things I forgot last video even though it was like 40 freaking minutes long. <laughs> I do apologize about that but hey it had some good information. Uh, I did go back and watch some of it but I don't remember if I spoke about everything. Uh, kind of breezed through it. Uh, just in case I didn't state this. First off, food. Um, not counting the 50% uses less here. Um... When your food gets down to rations, you get like 13 to 17% negative to all your attributes for you and your entire clan. Again, I'm not 100% sure if I um, stated that. Plus, everybody starts getting unhappy, and I do believe your sanity starts dropping a little. However, if you completely run out, their sanity and happiness drop even faster and <laughs> they will attack you if they go too insane. Or they'll just flat out leave. One second, guys. Another one I think I failed to mention here. If you notice, this guy's like at a happiness of 105. He is brimming to be here. I don't know what's going on at all, but <laughs> uh, I like him already. Uh, NPC locations. I'm not sure if I stated right-clicking once will select them. Right-clicking again will do this. All right bring up their stats, their inventory, and all that stuff, but right-clicking on a blue one will move them after you select them. Kind of like that. You can also switch here and just move something completely random. Or not random, but whoever was shown up there. I just wanted to state that. Now, we also talked about expeditions and all that. Uh, look for some of the names up here. Like, this is a forest of mushrooms, of clutter, uh... Where was the other one? Black Forest of Bears. These give bonuses to trapping, foraging, fishing, and hunting. Foraging is its own little expedition. Uh, da -da -da. Hunting, fishing, and trapping are all based on uh, gather food. As you can see here, Nissen is terrible at fishing and foraging, but is good at hunting and trapping. Of mushrooms, damn, it's good at everything. <laughs> But the only one for you uh, really need to worry about for hunting, like I said, is everything but foraging. But that's actually a good place to forage. Uh, da, da, da. Now, this one of clutter. I believe this is something you go to adventure or find items. But as you can see here, you do find some good stuff. Now, Expedition uses 50 points. And you can get a maximum of 75. I think you get 50 points. Uh, in one hour, you'll get 50 points, so uh, do the math, and you'll get about how much you get per minute. Let's see. Another thing I forgot to notice is on your map, as you notice, uh, they're all different names, and you see the purple points of where you can enter and exit a map, uh, that particular zone, but you also see these. Let me zoom in here. Ah, too much. These are teleport pads. Now, these are important not just for you to get there, but for your people to be able to do an expedition. You can have the entire map located, but if you have not found that portal, like it's off in some obscure part that you haven't found yet, you cannot send an expedition there. So, let's go ahead and send out an expedition, just to show it off. And what am I doing? <laughs> I have no idea why he has uh, an expedition mark. Why was I about to say apostrophe? Ugh. I don't know why he has that. Some of them will actually have different symbols on here. I don't know if that's just a glitch or if that's something. I'm pretty sure he may have a mission for me. Uh, we'll definitely go look. You know what? Where in the hell are you? All right. There you are. Let's send you over here. Now... Let's go talk to him. Unpause the game. Do you have a mission or no? I know I sent you around here somewhere. Oh, I sent him up here. If I haven't seen him, he's not here yet. He may have to travel. I don't 100% know. Where are you? Okay, there he is, and no, he has no mission. So I guess that's just something weird. I really do not know. I'm sorry about that. Uh, yes, expedition. 
Uh, I'm good on food, which is actually one of the win prog uh, thing. Um, food supply. Wow, that, that shut up. Some of these will... Eh, maybe quest doesn't... Uh, okay, so maybe logistics win will go up. I don't know about quests, but that is a way to win. But as you can tell, uh, one of my others that had win at 250, and I think that was a level one. But now, as you can see, it's 408 food supply. So it always, always gets progressively harder. All right. So, uh, shrooms, did I say, right? No. Yes. All right. And then you just select. They have to be in red. That means they're selected. Uh, let's see. What were the symbols again? Let's go ahead. I can see over here. Now, you generally want them to have an H if you're going to send them out. Or maybe even capture. I don't, I'm not 100% sure. Um, H definitely for hunting. G for gathering. And they'll get bonus results. Like, if I want to go gather, uh, Arlay here is really good at grabbing herbs and stuff. And he also happens to be an herbalist. What does that do? Herbalism creates health potions occasionally. Okay, so occasionally, you'll have a health potion appear in your uh, inventory. Plus, he has a 300% potion forging. Huh. Can he forge them? That's actually interesting. Or maybe every time he goes on there, he collects enough to create. Maybe that's how it works, but me Clobbering. All right, done. Exit. Now, as you can see here, they go out for five minutes. You see all five of them, all their health bars. They are actually there. This red portal will take me here. They are here. They are fighting. They can die. And yes, these are specters. Eh. Ooh. And you will get random pleas for help. I've got... This is my third guy. I have... Ah, screw it. I don't even remember. But he's the third person. I, I don't even know if the other people are still alive. It doesn't say where they are. You just gotta get lucky enough to find them. What on earth is this thing? By the way, where is this? We're just gonna go. Pause. <laughs> I do care about them. I do intend to continue this game. I don't exactly like the skill set I got, but eh. Let's see. Okay. So last time, I was going to talk about... No, not last time. The last time I stated, I was going to do diplomacy. So let's get into diplomacy. So first off, you can see the grid. I've only met three people. And they've each met each other. Ooh. Okay. I'll get into what I just, this, uh, just noticed. So you got these bars. You can tell by the colors how people like each other. I'm somewhat neutral with these guys. These two like me, and these two like each other. And these two also like each other. But these, not so much. Now, if you notice this dotted line here, and if we go over here, says, if it's a dotted line, that you haven't met them. You will never see that going to you, uh, because you will only ever notice them here if you've found them, or have traded for contact info, which I did for Dragon Claw. But you will see them between each other, so that's a good way to know, hey, there's a trade deal here. I can either get money, or, I don't know, maybe I can trade for something valuable. Generally, it's not too valuable just to let people know they're there, but you can get something. Uh, under here, you see their icons. These guys are aggressive. They do tend to start wars. Uh, they're adventurous, so they recruit a lot of people, so they're generally going to have a lot of people to fight, so be careful. Uh, these guys are lucky. They find better items. They're actually a magic guild, so be careful. They hit hard, but they're not very tanky. Get in, do some damage, and get the fuck out, basically. <laughs> uh, but they are very good at attaining money, so good at items, good at money. You want these guys as your friend. These guys, heart of gold, you also want them as your friend. Not only are they good at attaining money, but they give a lot of gifts. These guys will make you rich really quick. And they're easy to please. These two, well, these are really passive, guys. These, nah, I wouldn't say passive, but they're not aggressive. But, yeah, they, they're they not afraid to go to war. As you can tell, they're at war with the gra uh, Dragon Claw and have a non-aggression pact with the Heart of Gold. If, you know, if you look above that, 
Uh, you can see the regressions with me, uh, relations with me, which I am the Infernus faction. So they like me at 46.9. That's not good. 50 is neutral. They generally will not start a war, or they or they will not raid or do anything like that. But they do start degrading because at that point they're not sure, and if you don't do anything, they're you're pretty much just a liability. Uh, you can also tell the number of the members they have and what level they are. These are important. The members are how many they have for physical people guarding their place or what they can send on an attack to you. Eight tells you what level they are. And I think eight is actually their base level. As you notice, there's a lot of... Well, actually, let me go back over an enemy. All right. Where is an enemy? That's not going to do. I need an enemy. Oh, come on. Here's something. There we go. All right, so Stalker Clan. We have over here, effective level takes into account real level, rank, monster difficulty, etc. So if they can be an elite boss, or I don't know if it's called boss, but they can be all kinds of stuff up here, and it will change their level. Plus, they can have effect. These guys have a very good chance to cause deep wounds, basically bleed. So let's just leave him alone after I just one-shot his ass. He was only level 4, I'm level 8. I have no idea if I even could consider me having a real level or not since I'm so much more equipment based but yeah you get the idea of 8 is going to be their base there's definitely going to be modifiers now as you can see here it says I have quests I just have one quest sometimes it'll actually be up there and there won't be quests if it has a little asterisk that is the star symbol above the 8 or shift 8 basically it means the area you're in has a quest for them if it has this exclamation point, it means you got a quest to turn in. Now, before I get to them, if you have that, uh, an ex green exclamation point, you go here to solve quests and it's not here, then chances are high it is for you one of your people, which you're going to have to go and find. The best way to do that is obviously look in the map. Um, if they have a quest, I think they'll show it to the, uh, with the question mark above them, but it'll definitely have an exclamation point to find. If you're wondering what these Gs are, they're guards. I'm the green dot. Da -da -da. No, wrong button. All right. So like I said with these guys, I'm at 46.9, max of 60. The reason why it's a max of 60 is because I do not have a non-aggression pact. If I have a non-aggression pact like I do with these guys, the max is now 72. Now... I don't have to be at 72.5 to raise it. I can, so long as I'm close, probably within five points, you can raise it. But if you're within five points, you're going to have to pay or fork over something good. And it will up their um, relation towards you and not only just increase your max, but you generally want to wait until you're closer. And it's real easy. Just do some trading, gift them a little bit of gold. Uh, like one gold will get them up like two to three points, at least in this early game, or not one gold, one silver. Uh, but if you notice, I got a lot of quests to turn in. Well, as close as I am here, if I turn in those quests, it's going to max me out really fast. And then after, once I'm maxed out, the only thing I'm going to get is the experience and the gold. See, 4.9 relation for that quest would be 3.9 and a whopping 5.9. If I want to turn in any of those, I'm losing relation. I'm losing the bonus. So, when you're this close, do not turn in any quest until you upgrade to the next level. So it goes, just notice, so you're just at peace. Uh, what was that called? Let's go back. Uh, Non-aggression pack, mutual aggression, or mutual protection, and alliance. Basically... We're not going to attack you, not at least until this falls. And once you get below 55, I say, they tend to drop it if they're more aggressive. If they're loyal, they'll wait until you're below 50. Mutual protection pack. This one you got to be careful. It can put you in a bad situation, but at the same time, it can protect you. If anybody declares war on that faction, I don't know if they, if, like, say, I get in a mutual protection pack and these guys are at war with them, I'll have to hop in. As you can tell, they're raiding. They're actually at full war. 
But if they, if I attack them, I don't think these guys will jump in. Let's say if they weren't at war. So I'm not 100 percent sure how, if that's how it works. But definitely for alliance, you attack, they will jump in as well. Uh, but if I make, like I said, if I do that mutual protection pack now, I'm going to get into a war. So I have to determine: do I want to hate these guys or do I want to like these guys? These guys tend to be aggressive and have numbers. Where these guys generally have some good items I can trade for. Or even money itself. Powerful ally, but also powerful enemy. And then just random stuff. It depends on your play style. I could try to get everybody to like each other, like these two. I can get them to like each other because they're already there. Let's see, what are they? They're at 56. Okay, that's not high, but it's not low. 59. Yeah, they could form a pact. As you notice, max is 60. So let me solve a quest for one for these guys. What am I at? I should be pretty high. Yeah, I'm at 60. So go ahead. Let's get this off a of trade. Now, this is actually done more than just make them like me. If you notice this, my relations have gone up just a tad. I believe it was at 46. And these guys, now I'm at 71.4. And that's because both of them like these guys. They're, they're hard not to like. Come on. <laughs> so completing missions for these guys will make everyone else uh, change their relations towards me based on their relations towards them. If they hate them, they're going to go down. So if I start turning in these quests here, they're going to like me because they're they're at a mutual uh, non-aggression pack. So they're still going to like me. These guys are going to hate me more and more. But I am losing out on a little bit of experience and hardly any copper. Okay. But definitely some good experience right there. Oops. Let's go ahead and solve those. So now I went down to 68. And now I'm up to 62. Here, I'm up to a full 60. No point signing a non-aggression back to them because as soon as I turn in their uh, items here, they're going to hate me now. And now, let's go ahead and turn in a few quests. Oops. Turn in a couple. I really should have looked at the thing. Okay. I'm not too worried about... I'm not too worried about losing much because I do have a lot of stuff to turn in. Now, these guys, I am getting higher. And so with these guys. Yeah, it jumped up to a max of 82.5, and that's to get me a full-on alliance. Oops. Wrong one. Turn in those two. And I'm 82.5. Now, the reason I'm not too worried about wasting some of that quest... Huh, 83.9. Maybe you don't waste all the relations. Uh, probably do get diminishing returns and just cap a bit. I... That or the trade deal itself brought me up to 83.9. I'm betting that one. All right. So now these guys like me at 69.4. Let's go ahead and offer that. Whoops. You do not so. Okay. Anything you would like. Oops. Wrong button. Mutual protection. What would make this deal work? Six copper. I'm not worried about six copper. So now I am automatically at war with these guys, and so are them. <laughs> so this little alliance, so this little thing just screwed them over hardcore. Yes, they. I know they had a mutual uh, non-aggression pact, but because of me, they got screwed over. All right, so they're back to eighty-three-nine. Now before we get, go any higher. I'm going to do a few things here. So, I can raid them, which it doesn't tell me exactly what it does, which I'm pretty sure you just get resources, not to mention you just do some damage. Uh, I can declare war. I can do relation breakdown. So, natural degradation is what it always goes down, no matter what you do. You can be at 100. That's still negative 1.7. Uh, trade negotiation brought it up. Quest brought it up. This is, I believe, over the game. 
Uh, I can ignore clan, like say, let's get out of here. All the pop-ups over here. Uh, I can go click ignore. But the problem is, any deals they want to do, I won't hear anymore. So I'm just going to ignore them because I don't really give a damn. I can also sabotage them. And what this does, and I don't know why it took me out of that. Not like it matters. <laughs> well, you obviously have different chance, uh, different things, and they cost different. Okay, I don't actually have the 10 silver to do that. So it wouldn't have let me do it anyways. At least I hope it didn't. I hope I didn't have 10 silver. Um, I don't know what it... Okay, rumor is what I was thinking. Okay, sabotage will probably uh, damage some of their buildings, steal some of their food, poison their food. It can do all kinds of things. I haven't actually played around with that too much in this game, but if it's anything like Droxop, you just wreak random havoc. Rumor, on the other hand, we're going to do that with these guys. If I have the money. This stuff's expensive. I select the clan I want them to do, and I do either positive or negative. And this changes relations. Now, you got to be careful. Okay, we're not doing that, because you, you really don't ever want to do anything less than a uh, the, media, uh, the the best. Even though it's expensive, it has the highest succeed ch high success chance. Uh, it can succeed. It can critical succeed, if I'm correct. But... It can also uh, fail, and there's two different types of fail. You have fail and critical fail. Fail means nothing happened. Critical fail means not only does nothing happened, but they know someone was manipulating them, and they know it's you, so they lose relations with you. So be careful with this. Not only do you lose money, you do have a chance to fail. So let's solve you. Go check here. I can probably get oops, an alliance. For relatively cheap. Oops, right down here. Two copper. Yeah. Very cheap. Okay, so yeah, they still like each other. So now I'm going to turn in on the quest here. So uh, yeah, I'm up to 98.3. Now I'm up to 84.5. So if you balance, bounce back and forth between the quests, getting one to like you enough to level up, and then another one like you to level up, especially if you didn't do what I did and actually um, notice how much the quest in relation was giving you and just did it that way, you're going to get uh, really good relations with both these relatively quickly and relatively easily. And the more they like each other, the better relations you get, I believe. Don't quote me. <laughs> okay, so they like that. Yeah, now I'm at war. And all my people are away. So, how do you lose a war? Well, <laughs> taking too much damage for one is definitely a loss. But a war can kill you easily. There's two ways to lose. I don't know about entirely with the AI. I've actually never beat them. If anything, I've got my ass kicked by them. One clan, they're like a clan of demons. They're really weak, but they have high numbers. Well, they were technically weaker than me in base level, but when they spawned in, they were so high, I had to do hit and run maneuvers to kill one of them. And they came in groups. They slaughtered everything. Uh, I don't even remember what character it was, but it was brutal. Uh, their actual real level, I guess you could call it, was much higher than me because they were all elites. But anyway, you, you got your guards, your four points in the rest. Uh, they do spawn a warp gate somewhere, and I don't think you can destroy it. At least I couldn't, but then again, that was a few patches ago. Uh, for you, losing all your AI, uh, your little people in your faction, it's game over. Also, losing your crystal, this little health stone here, game over. Completely. So... Definitely try not to do that. 
if it's looking like you're going to lose, you can either take the loss right then and there or just exit out. I'd probably just take the loss because, as you'll see in a bit, ex uh, clearing off a world and starting a new does give you an, some XP penalty as well as dying. So let's go die. No, no, cancel the sabotage. Not enough money, thank God. Uh, hello? Okay, an ally is being attacked. All right, so let's go help an ally. Oh, pause real quick. I forgot to mention. You can find other people's layers around here. I haven't actually found the Dragon Claw yet, so as soon as I teleport to them, I'm going to know. But the Dark Veil is actually the Heart of Gold. And even though I found it and used their portal, because I wasn't high enough in diplomacy, I couldn't use it to warp back to. I can use it to warp from, but not towards. So keep that in mind. So let's head to them. Still pause, but I'm over here. Where are they? Okay, so they're right above them. Let's get out of here. No, unpause. Hello, Dimster Demon thingy. Or Lizard Man, I have no idea what you are. And I can't see the enemy who's attacking them. Oh, they're over here. So let's pause. Okay, these are those level 8.5 elites. And there's quite a few of them. Yeah. Oh, he's level 10. He has, damn, almost 1,000 HP. So much for a week. Yeah, I'm done. Damn, 11.5. Yeah, as you can see here, according to this, they're level 8, and they're still this freaking high in this capability. Oh, that was clicking on me. But anyway, I'm dead. Exactly what I wanted. Pause again. Now, as you can see, this white bar over here, that's XP debt. Every time you die, you get more debt. You can pay it off. However, until it's paid off, you're only using... It takes half of your experience. Half goes here. Half goes here. Now, the XP debt can get quite large if you just keep dying and dying and dying. So if you find a monster, like I actually did, I found couple that I was so powerful I couldn't actually stay there and I believe this warp gate or this one it's one of the two but as soon as I just walked out there he was and he aggroed me as soon as I came out and he two shot my ass I mean he three shot my ass right now <laughs> so uh, I died twice at least the first time I thought I was just low health. The second time, I watched my health go down into hits, so I needed to stay away at that point. But yeah, I, I had a huge experience debt. And there was another one up here. Uh, right here. No, he was right over here. I actually had to lure him all the way down. Uh, and then, I think he killed me, so I came out here, grabbed my corpse, and just ran this way. So I chased him around. Luckily, I had a speed ability, so I was able to outmaneuver him and get back up here and just quest. Either way... Careful, there are things that will kick your ass real easy. <laughs> but yeah, you can do little maneuvers like that. They stay where they are, but they stay in the world. Uh, generally, they're quest, and they're really powerful. So definitely be careful with that. Do they like each other anymore? No. No, they don't. But they like each other enough. By the way, damn, natural degradation is negative 10. Woo! I wonder if that actually applies to AI, because that means these two are going to be at war, and I'm going to have to lose the alliance of one of them. <laughs> I hate to I hate to lose Heart of Gold, but as you see, just how powerful these guys are, these guys got numbers, and they're the highest level right now. Wow, they actually don't have that many numbers in comparison. Interesting, huh? All right. Now, I know I'm missing something else, and I just can't remember. I ain't bad about that. Oh, yes. About the death. So let's go back and try not to die. Up here should be a gate. Yes. I think I can call them back early, but I'm not going to. Hello. I don't need that. I, if I reject it, though, he will hate it, but I don't care. I don't need it. 
This tells me a friend is under attack. I'm at war. Okay, they are gone. Can't use it. Did I die in there or did I die over here? I'm in. Is that mine? Yes, I died in there. Yes, I died in there. That soul stone holds some of your experience. Let's pause real quick. 3,755. Uh, I think it was up here. Yes. Grab it and run. Moved over here. It's now at 900. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it's now at 939. So it's a big jump down, but it's probably less than half. Uh, I wouldn't say this. See this fire? And dodge them. It's going to run and hit these houses. And they're going to catch on fire. The same can happen to you. So definitely be careful on that. Yeah, they're attacking his lifestone. So this guy is probably going to die really, really quickly. Go home. I wasn't home, but hey, it works. <laughs> Alright, so let's go ahead and save and quit. Go to play. Where is he? Okay, so this is my character that I have been using for the Let's Plays. Now, he's not very high. Because as you can tell, I'm getting my ass handed to me here. Uh, they're already attacking my Lodestone. Uh, they're right here. Not only that. I am at stage two zombie infection. These are freaking zombies. And they have an ass ton of life and health. Okay, so maybe not an ass ton of life. Uh, ass ton of life and health. <laughs> maybe not an ass ton of that, but definitely have some armor. It is. It took a lot just to harm them. However, now I can't harm them. So... That means I'm low on health potions, but I'm actually out. So healing is a bitch. And trying to get rid of uh, the stage two, I literally have to use my heal. So I decided to say, screw this level, which I completely forgot to show you. Ah, <sighs> load existing. I don't think I've died. Oh, pause. Yeah, I haven't died. They won't attack me. I can't attack them. As you can see here, I have no experience debt. So let's play, get the priest, hit OK, create new world. Now as you can tell here, I am level 12. Normal is level 10, which is what I had it on and I'm still dying. So that tells me not only do I have shit equipment, uh, <laughs> I have shit skills. And I don't mean personal skills, but I might, well, I'll probably have that bad too. <laughs> but uh, definitely his skill spread is bad. So I'm just going to leave it at this. Actually, I'm going to go very fast-paced so I can kill things faster. And I'm going to create an area. Now, as I stated, that's supposed to give you an XP penalty. XP debt. At zero. Maybe it's not going to take an effect until I kill something. Oh, wow. That healed everything. I have a very low chance to actually heal with the heal spell. That's all I've got. And the exit always seems to be north. And you always have that. What's electricity? Let's use this. Okay. Right now, I just want to kill something to see if I have an XP debt. No, I don't. Weird. Well, I'm pretty sure that's a glitch. So, don't believe that. Oh, no. Let's kill these things first. Then we'll get you. <laughs> Most powerful clan is now me. <laughs> so, let's go ahead and recruit them to clan. Oh. That might have been a bad idea. No, that wasn't a bad idea. Ho ho. So, rest and relaxation. Yeah, I need a lot. Good, he's happy, but he's insane. But yeah, like I said, 
it seems that's a glitch. It's supposed to give me an XP penalty. It states it does. But apparently it has not. So, beta. <laughs> Very late beta, but beta nonetheless. All right. So that was it for this tutorial, and this is it for the whole series. Uh, if I do remember anything, or if I talk about anything more advanced, I will definitely um, put it in the next Let's Play season, or I will at least put it in uh, the Anos for this for this video. So I'll probably post it down in the description if something new comes up. This way you can turn Anos on or off, pending your preference. But until then, see you guys later.